Hey y'all, welcome back to the farm. Um, I'm gonna take y'all over here, show you. We had new life on the farm two nights ago, I guess it was. Um, so I wanna show you, cause we were pretty stinking excited about it. Hey mama. So Charlotte, our old spot pig, had her first litter, and I think that's what you call it. I think that's what a group of pigs is, is a litter. She had her first little litter of piglets. Gosh, they're so cute. Um, she had eight of them. She's a first time mama. Um, and so far, all eight are doing great. They're all hanging in there. They're nursing like champs. They're generally up and moving around when she's up, but they're all piled, you can see, in a little pile of piglets there um, and Charlotte's eating her breakfast this morning but they have done so so well we were very pleased um, and then tomorrow Tyler's not here today uh, he's at work but tomorrow we'll probably uh, let Charlotte out to get some fresh air um, and then figure out kind of how we're gonna handle this whole piglet situation in terms of fencing and whatnot because we're still new to that and we are kind of figuring it out as we go so we knew she was pregnant obviously she was showing all the signs um and then we knew it was getting pretty imminent uh she got larger um and then as her demeanor changed she got very well i shouldn't say very she got a little aggressive um so we were being real careful around her and then two nights ago tyler came out here to do their evening feed and he was like she's gonna have piglets tonight she was actually being very aggressive and so we went ahead and pinned her up made sure she had plenty of warmth and shelter because of course it was going to be below freezing that night and there was going to be some rain and whatnot so we got her in here and then the next morning we kind of just let nature take its course we're not we try not to be real hands-on if we don't have to be when it comes to livestock we like to let nature take its course um, but we came out here uh, and we actually counted six piglets and so we thought she had six and then we got to look in and two of them had gotten out of the enclosure. Um, one of them was still doing fine, so we immediately put it back in with her and she started, or it started nursing right away. Uh, the other one was actually the runt of the litter and he was not doing well. He was almost like half frozen, honestly, and he was not nursing, so we decided to bring him in, warm him up really well. I honestly wasn't just real hopeful for the outcome of that. Um, but of course we wanted to give it a shot. So we brought him in warmed him up um, He couldn't suck. He couldn't quite figure out sucking. So we syringe fed him for about half a day and then About halfway through the day. He figured out sucking Started getting up moving around. So he did really well. He made like a full comeback uh, We kept him in the house all day and then that night we kept him in and we continued to bottle feed him that night the next morning, I had to go into work, but Tyler came out to attempt to reintroduce because obviously we didn't really want to have to bottle feed a pig if we didn't have to. Um, so he reintroduced the little piglet to Charlotte and the rest of the litter, and um, he took right to it. She took to him, and he took to it, and they're all doing great. Um, he's nursing like a champ. He is in there somewhere uh, amongst, amongst that pile of piglets. So we are just really pleased with how everything is going so far as first time pig owners we honestly are just learning as we go that's kind of just how you have to do it sometimes when it comes to livestock so uh very pleased with that but we will keep you updated with how they mature and grow and whatnot i will say i'm a little uh jealous that she is no longer pregnant and here i am still pregnant but i've got like gosh anywhere from like a week to four weeks to go so I'm slightly jealous, but I'm also very happy for her. <laughs> She's a great mom. Um, today, I am going to be up potting some tomatoes for the Bell Urban Farm plant sale. I've got to get on top of that. Again, I'm going to have a baby pretty soon, so I'm trying to stay on top of my tasks, be a little ahead of things because I know pretty soon I'm going to be in the hospital for a day or two, and I just want to make sure I have all my ducks in a row. So I'm going to be up potting some tomatoes in the greenhouse today. I've got to walk all the way out to the tunnel. Oh, where's the tunnel? All the way back there, we've got a big pile of compost. So generally when I up pot, I just do a mixture 50-50 ish. I eyeball it 50-50 of my seed starting mix and compost. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. I gotta run out there and grab a, a wagon load of compost. I'll bring it back to the greenhouse and we'll up pot some tomatoes together. 
Okay, y'all. I uh, got my compost. That was a whole workout in and of itself. Um, that's okay. It's good for me to get out and move my body a little bit. Um, I wised up and pulled a stool in here, so now actually I have a seat that I can sit in, uh, which is really nice. Uh, right now I'm just mixing my compost and seed starting mix together, and I got this big bucket thing here. Um, it actually used to be a pig feeding trough, and then uh, we would put their food in here, and then they would just dump it over and eat their food on the ground. So I mixed a little bit of water in here um, for, I get a lot of questions about um, uh, things about up potting, like what do you up pot into in terms of like the soil, like your potting mixture, um, what size uh, container do you pot up into, and then a lot of questions about how do you transport your plants from home to the plant cell, and so this is just what I do. This is what I've been doing uh, for a couple years now, and it seems to work for me. I like to use, for my tomato plants in particular, that's what I'm going to be up potting today. I like to use these four-inch pots. Um, these are really cheap. Uh, they're very flimsy. They're not the best quality, um, but, I mean, I'm selling them, so I'm, I'm trying to purchase something that uh, is going to be cost-effective for me in order to make money. So that's number one. Number two... Uh, you know, ideally, it would be nice to provide somebody with, like, a really strong, sturdy pot, especially if it's plastic, that they could reuse over and over again so they're not just chunking a bunch of plastic. But if we're being realistic, honestly, most people that are going to buy um, plant starts are just going to be chunking them anyways, unfortunately. So that's why I go with um, the cheaper option. And I get these from Greenhouse Mega Store. That That's the... Uh, I'm not affiliated with them at all, but that's just the place that I found that's the most cost effective for something like a plant cell. But for things that I like to keep around for myself, now this year we're doing soil blocks. I'm trying to keep all of my plant starts in soil, blo soil blocks so I don't actually have to up pot. I'm going to see how that goes. I don't know if it's going to work or not. Um, but if I was going to up pot my stuff into a pot, um, I would go with something that is much more sturdy like a bootstrap farmer pot. And that way I could get a ton of uses out of those if I took really good care of them. But these these aren't going to last very long, uh, but I did that intentionally. So uh, my tomato plants for the cell, they go into the four inch pots for my pepper starts. I've actually already up potted my peppers. I'll take you over there and show you in a little bit. And actually, uh, I up potted them. It is Wednesday right now. And I think I up potted most of them on Sunday, if I, if I remember correctly. Um... But ever since I've up-potted them into the half and half compost and seed starting mixture, they have really taken off. So they really um, are enjoying that nutrients. But I put those guys into, um, are they two inch pots or two and a half inch? Uh, I guess they're two and a half inch pots. And I like to put those in there. They're, they're a little, you know, peppers are slower growing. So I don't feel like they need um, a big old honking pot. So the bigger the pot, obviously you're going to pay more money, but you also have to think about the amount of soil or um, potting mix or whatever you're putting in there. You're going to have to use more of that. So consider that when you're choosing the size of your pot, right? Um, so today, oh, and then the other thing, a lot of questions about how do you transport all of those plants safely? Well, I take 10, 20 trays, and again, I have some that are some decent quality and then some that are not. This one's not decent quality. Uh, it's actually already got some cracks in it. I'm gonna use it as long as I can, and then when I can't use it anymore, I won't. Places like Bootstrap Farmer are gonna have stronger, sturdier trays. You're gonna pay more money for them, but you're gonna get years and years and years of use out of them. So if you're gonna invest some money, I would go with them, honestly. Um, but I think most of these came from uh, Greenhouse Mega Store. Uh, so I'll get as much use out of them as I possibly can, and then I'll switch over to something a little better quality. When I bought them, you know, I only had a certain amount of money to spend, so that's what I bought. Um, so when I transport my stuff, all of my containers go into 1020 trays, and then, thank goodness, my going from my house to the plant cell doesn't take just a real long time. It's like eh, 20, 25 minutes, so if I need to make multiple trips, that's okay. Uh, however, I would like to just make one trip because you think about, especially the way gas prices are right now, you think about, I mean, you got to, for your profit margin, you got to consider the amount of gas you're spending to transport these plants, right? So generally, like what we did last year, it worked really well, is we took two vehicles, 
we folded down the seats in my SUV and we just shoved as many 1020 trays in there as we could. And these guys fit uh, perfectly in there, so they're good and secure. They're not like knocking around or anything. Um, but we also have a horse trailer, and so we were able to bring the horse trailer as well and shove a bunch of trays into the horse trailer. So that's how we transport. Um, last year, we only, I think we only made one trip. Um, and this year, I think we should only have to make one trip. So that's how we transport our um, plant starts. I'm on a time constraint, aren't we all? Uh, I've got two little boys that'll have to be picked up from school here after a while. We got ball practice tonight, so this is the only time I have to work. So my goal today, this doesn't look like much, but it will be a lot, is to um, try and get all of these. These are the blueberry cherry tomatoes. Try to get all these guys um, uh, potted into these four inch pots. So I started all of these um, in that tiny little 20 cell soil blocker that it's like a three I think it's a three quarter inch cell so it's tiny 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 um you can see they're just getting their first set of true leaves on them which technically it's okay to go ahead and up pot that um generally I'll let them get just a little bit bigger before I up pot but again trying to stay ahead of the game I don't want to um get behind and then go into labor and then not have any time to up pot so I'm trying to stay ahead of the game uh, I will say if you look at these guys, it is March the 15th or 16th, something like that. I don't know. I can't keep my days straight. Uh, these are much smaller than my tomato plants were this time last year. And that is a little, uh, makes me a little anxious, but I did this on purpose. So last year when I went to the plant cell, my plants were bigger than what I wanted them to be. Um, and so I, I told myself last year that I was going to wait a week or two later into the season this year to start all my tomato seeds and so that's what i did so this is what i wanted but it still makes me a little nervous because i go back and i look at pictures of this time last year to see where i was at and my tomato plants were a little bit bigger so uh this is what i wanted but i, I about guarantee you once i get these guys up potted into this compost mixture they'll really start to take off so let's get started So when I pot um, tomato plants, and really only tomato plants, unless my little seedlings are pretty leggy, um, I always up pot them deeply. So um, I'll just show you. Do so you see that little guy there? Um, he's got his first set of true leaves. These are the uh, cotyledon leaves. That's what I call them. I've heard them called uh, cotyledon leaves or something. I don't know, cotyledon leaves. These are the first little set of leaves that you'll see come out of your seedling when you first get germination, and then this second set of leaves is your first set of true leaves, and then, you know, it'll just keep growing from there. Um, but technically, this guy's okay to go ahead and up pot, but I will go ahead and up pot him right below that first set of leaves, that, those cotyledon leaves. Um, these guys will eventually dry, or I say dry, they'll kind of yellow and fall, fall off, um, and that's fine, that's normal, don't freak out if you see that. Um, but what will happen is, can you see, it's hard to, y'all, I shoot all my videos on my phone, so I'm not, um, I don't have all the fancy equipment, but I don't know if you can see that, but, um, these little fuzzies on this main stem here, these will all develop roots if you put them under the soil, uh, and it'll just make for a lot stronger plant in the long run. It'll be kind of sad when we first up pot it, because it looks, you know, like it's starting to get somewhere, it's getting a little bigger. But now we're going to make him a little shorty again. So, oh, I just put my mixture in there. And I actually have a little bit of straw or hay or something in there. Um, and then just stick him in there like that. So, he's a lot shorter than he was. Not that he was just real big to start with. But I guarantee you now that he's in this mixture and he's getting some more nutrients, he's got a bigger space, he's really going to take off. And especially, we've got some really warm, sunshiny days coming up here pretty soon. Um, he, he'll take off. So, I'm excited to see him grow. Now I've got like 200 more of this variety to go. So, let's, let's do that.
Okay, that's 18 down, one tray. One tray of blueberry cherry tomatoes. Uh, really, the, it's pretty quick little process to uh, pot them. The painstaking process is to actually write out each individual little plant marker. So what I'll do right now is just put one plant marker in here so I remember uh, what this tray is. And then I'm gonna keep note of how many I actually have pot. And then tonight I'll probably, after the boys go to bed, I'll probably sit in the living room and just write out plant markers. Um, so that is, up, oh, and I just cracked my tray as I pushed it away. So that's one tray down. Um, many, many more to go, uh, but that's okay. That means that we had really good, successful germination on our blueberry cherries, which is good because I've had a lot of people asking me about them, if they're coming to the plants, or if I'm gonna have them at the plant sale or if I'm gonna have them for sale. Um, I did not start near enough last year. They were the very first thing that sold out for me. Um, so, glad I got good germination on them and I'll have a lot to offer. Um, but yeah, it'll just take some time to get done. I wanted to update y'all on uh, last week. If you watched my video last week, I talked a little bit about um, just money, revenue on the farm, how we're planning to try and make some uh, money from our farm and what kind of what my financial goals were this year for the farm. Um, but one of the things I had mentioned was potentially renting out this window greenhouse space um, as like a, a venue for photographers and, and whatnot. I think the possibilities are pretty endless, honestly. Um, and I have a photographer, I mentioned the video. It was an idea that I had, gosh, probably a year ago, but I never followed through with it. Just, I don't know, just out of fear that nobody would book it, I guess. I don't know, which is kind of silly. But I actually had a photographer reach out to me wanting to use it. And of course I said yes. Um, and then I, I talked about that in my video last week and after I uploaded that video, I was like, you know what, I'm going to go for it. And so I went ahead and advertised the greenhouse myself and within, gosh, about 15 minutes of putting it out there on social media, I got a booking for April, um, a weekend in April. Another photographer is going to come out, and she actually came out on Monday and um, took some promotional shots so she could promote uh, promote the photo shoot and get people to book it. Um, and I saw those pictures last night, and they turned out so so good. They were really good. Um, but anyway, she's coming out mid-April, uh, so that was just really encouraging to me so I wanted to share that with you and just kind of update you on that I'm also telling you because I'm hoping it's some encouragement for you to just put yourself out there I'm not saying it will work out whatever whatever it is whatever ideas you have um, but that is kind of one of my downfalls I have I have a lot of ideas um, I was just talking to Tyler last night I had an idea pop into my mind last night while we were eating dinner and I was like oh we should do this um, but a lot of times the fear of failure or fear of not executing it well will kind of hold me back. That's one of my barriers. Um, so if you feel the same way, just know you're not alone. I think that's a normal feeling. Uh, and, and know that not every idea you have is going to work out. I mean, I need to, I'm looking right now at my, all of my overwintered flowers out there. Um, that is not working out well at all. And that was actually a huge, <laughs> Uh, for us a huge financial investment at the end of last year and it's not gonna work out I don't think um, so also don't be discouraged if you have what you think is a really good idea and it doesn't work out don't let that discourage you from trying other things because I think it's normal to have um, setbacks and it's also normal to have fear of failure or fear of not executing something well uh, but the only way you're ever gonna succeed is if you just do it and you put yourself out there so I was really excited about that my parents actually came out um, last week, this past weekend, and they helped me really clean things up out here. Um, and I'm actually probably the money that I'm making off of renting this space out, I'm actually going to be putting it right back into this space, I think, for now, um, and doing some more landscaping around here and just fixing it up a little bit and hopefully um, rent it out more um, you know use use that money to encourage more people to want to rent it um, my mom was you know helping me brainstorm some other ideas things like fall and winter I mean you could really do some cool photo shoots and cool things out here um, 
my mom was talking about, you know, getting like a cool vintage couch out here, decorating it up for Christmas and doing like Santa photo shoots, uh, which would be just an awesome way to get people out here and to make some more money for the farm. So definitely keep thinking about those ideas, write them down, jot them down because you will forget them. I promise. Well, if you're anything like me, you'll forget them. So I just have like this running list. Uh, actually, I have multiple lists. I have lists in my phone and have lists on multiple notebooks. So keep your list. Keep those ideas flowing, and I'm gonna go ahead and encourage you to take one of those ideas today. Take one of those ideas and go ahead and run with it and set yourself a deadline and say, I'm going to execute this idea by this date and um, just do it and just see where it gets you. Okay, y'all, um, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video now. I've got whole bunch of tomatoes to get done before I have to pick my kiddos up. I'll keep you updated on their progress. I bet this time next week they're going to be quite a bit bigger now that they're in bigger pots and getting some good nutrients. Um, so I'm excited to see their growth. Uh, I'll keep you updated on the pigs. Uh, I'm really pleased with how that's turning out. Uh, we will see you guys next time. I hope you have a good rest of your week and a good weekend and we'll catch you next time. Bye.